Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity of bringing us together this morning. Please help us to not just hear, but to understand your word and obey. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn to page 1236, Revelation chapter 3, verses 4 to 14 to 22. To the church in Laodicea, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realise that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put it on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Keep the Bibles open. And if you turn to page three of the service sheet, you might find some things there that would be helpful. And here's the question this morning. Here is the question. How do you win in life? We all want to be winners. We all want to succeed in life. When it comes to life, how do you get to the top of the leaderboard? How do you win in life? Well, here are some possible answers, I think, to that question. Answer number one, if I could get my volunteer, you win in life by having the biggest biceps, completing the most London marathons, and by generally having the best washboard abs. You stand there, pump your iron. How do you win in life? Do you win in life? by getting the fastest park run times. Is that how you win in life? Or, maybe a more contemporary answer, do you win in life by having the lowest carbon footprint? Uh, So let's get another volunteer. Come on, Bethan, you you come up here this time. Is the person who wins in life the person who um, uses their car? The least, oh sorry, there we go, try and get that on, you can stand next to Will. The person who uh, cycles around the place, the person who eats the least meat, the person who uses the least single-use plastic. Is that how you win in life? That's one possible answer. Or here we go, here's another answer. Maybe you win in life by having the most friends. Uh, Nathaniel, why don't you come up here now? Maybe the person who wins in life is the person who gets invited to the most parties. The most exciting social life. Maybe that is the way to win in life. Or maybe you win in life by having the most exciting experiences. The person with the biggest bucket list. Uh, The person who um, has the most exciting holidays. Let's get one more volunteer. Who wants to come this time? Come on, Hannah. You can come and wear my life jacket. Maybe you win in life by having the most adventurous life. If they had a leaderboard for life, how do you win? How do you get to the top? Because if you uh, keep the Bibles open, everyone, that is the question that we have been really asking the last couple of months. That is what this book of Revelation is all about. The word is there again in verse 21. Do you see it there? To the one who is victorious, right? To the one who wins, to the one who overcomes. And this morning, we are going to meet a church 
who because of their riches and their wealth and achievements thought of themselves as definitely at the top of the leaderboard and we are going to see what Jesus has to say to a proud church like that and we're going to see how Jesus defines the winning life. And the encouragement with all of this, everyone, is verse 19, if you have a look at it. Maybe, like me, you found Jesus' words quite brutal, actually, these last few months in these letters. Maybe, like me, you feel that Jesus has spoken quite strongly to these churches. Well, here's the encouragement, verse 19. Why does he speak strong words? Well, he loves his church. He's died for his church. He's given himself for his church. And so he speaks these strong words because he wants his church to be full of winners. That's what this is all about. You guys go and grab a seat. And uh, we've got two points. And point number one is how not to win. How not to win. Now, Livy, if you come up here. And uh, I need one more volunteer. Uh, Sammy and Manu, do you want to come up? Do you fancy one of you coming up? No? Charlie, go on then. You come up and... um, have a taste of this, Livy. There's some nice hot chocolate. Tell me what you think of that. Very good. We love hot, don't we? We love hot. Yeah, we love hot. We love going to John Chapman and getting a hot coffee. We love a flat white. We love a cappuccino. Hot is good, right? Hot is good. And at the same time, we like cold. We love a nice, ice, cool water after a hot summer's day coming in from school hot is good cold is good but what is a bit yuck is something in the middle no one is going to go up to John Chapman after church and say please John could I have like a half cold cup of coffee please and no one likes a sort of tepid glass of water. You can stop drinking now. <laughs> but if you have a look down, I can't remember the verse, but if you have a look down, spiritually speaking, that is what is going on. Verse 15 with this church in Laodicea. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. So on the one hand, here is a group of people who haven't left the church completely, but on the other hand, aren't really very serious about the gospel. On the one hand, they still go through the motions and they still sing the songs, but on the other hand, they're not really going for it in the Christian life. Just perhaps they get a bit more excited about what present they might get for Christmas rather than sharing the gospel with someone so consumed with holidays and entertainments and phones that they haven't got time to to pray together as a family and what lies behind it all and what lies behind all of this half-heartedness is this proud self-sufficient attitude can you see that in verse 17 I am rich I have acquired wealth I do not need anything. So here is a hundred dollar bill. Now, can, kids, can you see what's written on a hundred dollar bill? Can you see what that says? In God we trust. Which I think is quite ironic. Because if I'm talking about how I feel, the healthier my bank balance, the less likely I am to trust in God, personally speaking. Can, can you relate to that? The more hundred dollar bills I have, the more sort of self-sufficient I feel. Does that make sense? So when, um, when I don't have a house and I'm not on the housing market, oh, that's when I feel insecure. But then as soon as I get on the housing market, I don't need God anymore. I'm all right. Or when I don't have the qualification and I haven't passed the exam, that's when I feel a bit anxious, a bit insecure. But then as soon as the results come in and everything's okay, I don't need God anymore. Can can you relate to that? Now, please don't mishear Jesus here. Um, Sometimes when you hear Christians speak, it's almost as if they're really down on having a career or having money. 
Sometimes you can hear Christians speak like that. But Jesus is not anti-money. He's not anti-property. He is not anti-investment. He is not anti-career. These things only become bad things when they go from being a, a good thing into being a God thing. This is what I look forward to for my this is what I look to for my security. This is my number one. This is what gives me my sense of meaning and identity. Nothing wrong with money. Good thing. But it becomes a bad thing when we make it into a God thing. I don't need God because money gives me everything I need. And that is the church of Laodicea. And if you have a look at verse 16, how does Jesus feel about this, kids? So let's try. Anyone fancy a little bit of half and half? Anyone want to drink? It's disgusting, isn't it? A bit of hot and a bit of cold. No one wants to volunteer to drink that. And that is how Jesus feels about this church. He says, I can't stand the taste of you. You make me feel sick. You make me want to throw up. That is how Jesus feels about the kind of proud self-sufficiency. Now, as we have said all the way through these letters, this letter is not written to you. It's not about you. So let's not beat ourselves up unnecessarily. But personally speaking, as someone who has much myself, I can see how this could be a danger for me. And and maybe you could relate to that too. I don't need God anymore because money and achievement gives me everything that I need. Right, let's pause there. That's point one, how not to win. Now, our next song is going to give us a little bit of a clue as to what the winning life might look like. Have we got some actions? Let's have a think about what the winning life could look like. Let's stand and let's sing together. Still got the life jacket on. house upon the sand the foolish man built his house upon the sand the foolish man built his house upon the sand and the rains came tumbling down the rain came down and the floods came up the rains came down and the floods came up the rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand fell flat Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ To build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ To build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ For He's the Lord of all Take a seat. Well done. How do you win in life? Well, we thought about how not to win. I don't need God anymore because money gives me everything that I need. And how do you win? How do you win in life? Well, have a look at verse 18. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. So imagine a market... There are market stalls everywhere, advertisement, slogans. Everybody is trying to sell you something. Roll up, roll up, pound of pears, pound of pears, lovely bananas, lovely bananas. You know, you get the scene. 
But imagine that every stall on that market was selling fake goods. You know, the sort of fake football shirts kind of thing. Except for one stall on the market which is selling the real, genuine, authentic article. And Jesus is saying that he is that stall. Only he can give us the true, eternal versions of everything that we need. That's the whole point of this. So Jesus can give us riches that last forever. It's as if all of the wealth in the world is fake, it won't last. But Jesus gives us the keys to heaven. If I can find my key. And he says, why don't you you come in and make yourself at home? Let me give you the keys to all the riches of heaven. And then Jesus gives white clothes. Let's have another volunteer. He wants to come up this time. Um, You guys have already been up. Harry, sorry, I've missed you. Harry, come up. This is going to be fun. Before God, we we are naked. There is guilt. There is shame. How embarrassing to stand before God on Judgment Day with no clothes on. But on the cross, Jesus takes our nakedness and our shame... And Jesus, this is going to be fun, isn't it? And Jesus gives us white clothes. He takes our nakedness, our shame. And he gives us white clothes. The perfection of the Lord Jesus. Now just think about this for a moment, everyone. Think about the perfection of Jesus. The perfection that washes the feet of his, the one who betrays him. The perfection that says from the cross, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. That is a perfection that you cannot better. You cannot improve on that. And that is the perfection that the Christian is clothed with. That doesn't change when you mess up. doesn't change when you fall into sin. God sees us. And he sees the perfection of his son. Now, Where else in the universe can you get that kind of security? Can money give you that kind of security? Wealth, achievements? Only Jesus can give us what we really need. The true versions of what we really need. Well done, Harry. Thank you. So, this letter ends with a very, very famous verse. This famous appeal, verse 20. Here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Here is a church that has pushed Jesus out into the cold. Get out here, Jesus. Go away. Here is a church that thinks it doesn't need Jesus. I have money, I have wealth, I do not need God anymore. And so Jesus stands at the door And he says, will you realise that only I can give you everything you really need? Only I can give you the true eternal versions of everything that you look for. Will you open the door? Will you let me in? Will you let me come and eat with you? Because in the book of Revelation, there is only one winner. How do you win? There's only one winner. Only one person who wins, one person who conquers, one person who is victorious, one person who overcomes. And the way that we win, folks, is by opening the door... What does that mean? ...and letting him in. That is how you win. That is how you conquer. Now, can we finish? Can I finish by just checking that we've got this? Let me finish by checking that I've understood this. Now, normally it doesn't, it doesn't come to this. Normally we don't have to make a choice. Normally it doesn't work like this. But hypothetically speaking, if there was a choice, would you rather have all the riches and the wealth and the achievements of Laodicea and not have Jesus? 
Or would I rather have nothing and be a Christian? Because how I answer that question determines whether or not I'm a winner in life. Only Jesus can give us the true eternal versions of everything that we need. How do you win in life? Well, open the door, get the white clothes, get the riches from him. Let me pray. Let me pray. Jesus says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love of the Lord Jesus. Thank you that he died for his church. Thank you that he loves his church. Thank you that he longs for his church to win and be victorious. And we pray, therefore, that we might open the door to him. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. Thanks very much, Rich. Our last song gives us a chance to commit to the things we've been talking about, doesn't it? Because if we sing in Christ alone, my hope is found... And we, we truly mean it. That is actually.